Today we're uh, going to be talking about wicket keeping and specifically uh, run outs for wicket keeping. I've got Steve Davis here to help me from Worcestershire County Cricket Club, a very promising wicket keeper. First and foremost, Dave, oh, we all know that the difference between getting a run out and missing out on a run out can be this much. So obviously the quicker we can be as wicket keepers is going to help our fielding team. The old fashioned way of, uh, I suppose, inflicting a run out for the keeper would be to actually catch the ball, be it a reverse cup or normal, and then take it back to the stumps. We may miss two or three yards there in the run out. So we've got to look to try and cut down that time that the ball takes to go back to the hands and all the way back to the stumps. Now to do that, we're going to try and practice a drill. Okay, we're actually taking the ball in front of the stumps. And what I mean by that isn't actually catching it like so. It may be that the throw's slightly wide. First and foremost, the most important aspect would be to try and get your body as close to the stumps as possible. From there, we now need to make a very, very early decision. You see that throw coming in, have I got to go the right side of it, have I got to go the left side? In this instance, I can see the ball travelling towards me slightly outside the stumps on my right side. To do that now, I've got to be very, very careful not to knock the bales over. I'm going to put my left foot right next to where the stumps would be. I call that an anchor. The ball's now coming in. I know exactly where the stumps are simply because my left foot is right next to them. I'm going to catch the ball and as I catch it, I'm taking it back to the stumps all in one swooping motion. I can also do it to the left. I might have to do it with a reverse cup. Okay, I see the ball coming to my left. I'm going to jump out, keep my right foot next to where the stumps are. That's my anchor. I'll reverse cup back to the stumps. Come back for the second for this stroke. Throws in, rocket like throw from the deep. They've gone for the appeal. I think the time it takes for the wicket keeper to take the bales off has saved Andrew Flintoff. The modern way is to take it in front of the stumps to save time, but when you take it behind the stumps, the time it takes enables Flintoff to get home. I need to be in a position with the shoulder slightly rotated, which this position gets you in to be able to go back to the stumps nice and simply. Here, I've got nowhere to go to the stumps. It's going to be actually longer in that time frame to actually instigate the run out. Just tell me the key points regarding the right posture for waiting for a throw to come towards you. Personally, I'd say a nice firm base, not too wide, shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit wider, depending on the person. Obviously being on balls of your feet with a slight flex in your knees, because obviously for this drill, we need to get in front of the stumps like so. You know, obviously the main point is catching the ball so your head and eyes need to be still. What would be the problem if you got a keeper and his legs were too straight? His movement would be limited really, not a great explosion. Good, good. So he can move faster when he's got more bend in his legs. Excellent. This type of exercise is more for the guys who are outside the circle, the guys running into the ball from the deep. But mid-off and mid-on, I think you can achieve this type of technique from throws from mid-off and mid-on. All I'm going to do is very, very simply disappear into the outfield round about mid-off and mid-on. I'm going to throw some balls at you and all I want you to think about is them crucial points getting up nice and tight behind the stumps using left or right foot as the anchor early decision making and then sweeping the ball back towards the stumps Brilliant Devo, any, any issues, any problems? Yeah, uh, on one of them I messed up on the line a little bit I came, came round to the right when the ball was obviously to the left It can happen and, and the good thing was that you knew exactly where the stumps were you still managed to inflict the run out as it were you got the bales off but the key is on line is as soon as you see that ball leave his hand in the deep you've got to try and make an early decision as to which line you will mess up every now and then but more often than not I mean probably 95% of them balls you got bang on what if the ball's top of the stumps and dead straight some people may coach just to actually stay there and pop down with the hands like so when it's very very deep and you've got lots of time for the ball to come towards you and lots of time to make a decision I still see no problem being one side or the other in bringing the ball back towards the stumps. It's still going in the same direction to me then it still should be very very quick and quicker in fact that's my view. What if the ball's so wide that I can't keep my anchor there? Good point. If it's a wild throw a little bit wider either way then you have to leave the stumps as simple as that but try and get in your memory exactly where them stumps are use your flicks use a dive anything like that we'll do a little bit of that now as well in this next drill okay Devo, really really good lots of flicks lots of underarm and overarm flicks a difficult thing to do is it easy to do tell me what sort of things you think about um there's no secret really i think it's just a just a case of knowing where where the stumps are 
keeping my head and eyes and still and plenty of practice. Someone who makes it fun, I think is the most important thing. There's nothing worse for a young lad who it's all just a bit of a you know arduous task. You know, why do so many school kids hate school? Because it's a bit of a chore, isn't it? So your sport and recreation literally has to be that. It has to be recreation, it has to be fun. Chris Reed, I, I really do feel, is almost like um, a magician with the gloves on in the sense that things look so easy to him. Uh, he has a, a great tip. I don't know who gave him the tip, but I spoke to him about it. And it works with, with coaching wicket keepers, so it might be one to pass on. Is that tell your keeper to catch as though he's catching in slow motion. And when I see Reedy keep, he looks as though he's keeping in slow motion. So you know, that's testament to somebody who's at the top of his tree, as it were. If I'm wanting to work on something specifically during the week, you know, the days leading up to a game, what I tend to use is a tennis ball wrapped in tape. Someone hitting with the tennis racket, and what that does because of the tape, the ball starts wobbling. And as you know, here at Lords, and particularly in England, all over, the wobbling ball is a big problem. So I find that really helps for trying to practice that. Well, Kurt Devo stood up to medium pace because when I played, I really enjoyed that sort of part of the game. It happens more and more now in one day cricket, particularly because for several reasons. It helps the bowler know where the batsman is because he tends to stay in his crease. You can certainly pressurise the batsman. On top of all that, you're in a great position for the runouts because you're on top of the stumps. You haven't got a long way to run in towards the stumps to inflict the runout. One of the key areas I find and when I see in a lot of the young keepers, when they stood up to the stumps, they actually stand too deep. You really do need to be quite close to the stumps. If you're deep, you catch the ball. Remember, we're up here for a stumping. And if we've got a long way to come back, there's every chance that the batsman's come back in his ground. OK, first of all, two things, Devo. One, let's try this without the gloves on so that you've got a real good feel for the ball going into your inners. OK, so a little bit more difficult. And secondly, if you were to turn the stumps a little bit on their side, that'll help me as a hitter. Hopefully I won't hit the stumps that often and we'll keep the drill going. So the type of drill I want to do, first of all, is about speed, is about getting the ball back to the stumps as quick as you can without snatching at the ball. So sure, the ball's going to come to you, relax, catch the ball, but then we're looking at speed. All right, speed with the footwork and speed back to the stumps because that's what's going to get us a stumping. To do that, I'm going to use a tennis racket with a hard tennis ball. It's a firmish tennis ball, which you can get. Obviously, the youngsters will have to wear a helmet in this drill. 10, excellent. Why would we use a tennis ball rather than a cricket ball in these drills? No, I really enjoy using the tennis ball. Obviously, it saves your hands. It stops you from getting bruises. You obviously can do more practice. Also, it teaches you to have soft hands. You know, if you've got hard hands, it'll bounce out. Now, I have a very, very strong theory. This is my view, that when the ball goes down the leg side, if my head and hands and feet went across early to the line of the ball, I would now be blinded by your body. So I can't see the ball. If I can't see the ball, I'm not going to be able to catch it. So to enable me to see the ball, what I'm looking to do now from my position, my ready position, is I can see the ball going down the leg side. I'm starting to move my hands across there because I'm gauging where that ball's going to be. So I haven't got a blind spot or I've got less of a blind spot. From there I can see the ball, my feet and head and hands go back to the stumps. They all move a little bit later. Just notice one thing. I've got an anchor so I can get back to the stumps. My feet didn't go all the way across and of course I can't get back to the stumps or it takes longer to get back to the stumps. Ah! Big shout and it's been given. Mascarinas gets his first one in the international wicket. OK, Devo, some real good basics for the position and posture that you need to be stood up to the stumps. Near enough to the stumps so that you can reach them OK. Weight on the balls of your feet. So in the point of delivery, just as the bowler releases the ball, a lot of wicket keepers actually bring their backsides in their squat position down like so. Have you got any idea why that might be a problem? From that position, you're not very explosive. You can't, you know, get down the leg side. Excellent, good. So from this position here, I need to be able to lift my backside slightly, but keep my hands low to be able to move. Good, excellent. From here, I can't move with my backside being so low. So the backside needs to come up, hands nice and low, and in a good position, ready to move. Good bend in your legs? Yep. Good, why is that good for? Again, for explosion down the leg side. Excellent. Why should the hands be low? For that one that skids on. Good, the ball that keeps low. Yeah, is it easier to come up than to go down once you're up? No, easier to come up. Easier to come up, good. So hands nice and low, ready to explode upwards if need be. One of the key differences from stood up position to stood back point of delivery position would be the hands. There you've got your hands nice and low, which is terrific for stood up, because if the ball does keep low, you're in a great position to catch the ball. However, if it bounces, you're in a great position to power upwards 
move the body and take the ball. So the hands can't be too high when you stood up to the stumps, particularly to the medium paces, but also the spinners. So this drill is all about speed. I'm not looking at technique whatsoever because I'm gonna be firing balls really, really quickly at you. What I'm looking for is have the speed to get across to the ball, back to the stumps. What I want to try and coach you is that a medium pacer down the leg side stumping, it's all about speed. So we're looking for hands in a quick early position and quick hands back to the stumps. Don't worry too much about the technique, just looking for speed. Okay, Dave, well, this next drill is going to be all about timing, but I'm going to look at some technical issues as well regarding your keeping. The timing being the rhythm of the ball skimming off the surface like a medium pacer would bowl a ball, maybe a little bit of leg cut or off cut, and the ball being timed into your gloves. Half volleys, length balls, that type of delivery. It may be wide outside off, and I'm looking at the head position being good so that you can go across with your head to the ball. Also, most importantly, I'm looking at either side, you're leaving a anchor. So an anchor that can get back to the stump so you know exactly where the stumps are. So we'll do a set of 10, no real speed. We'll take our time in between balls and I might do some leg side as well. Great set, Dave. Well, maybe there was one wide outside off that possibly you just left your head behind. Remember, wide outside off, get that head onto the line of the ball, move that right foot if you have to, keep your anchor and back to the stumps. So apart from that, the leg side was brilliant and certainly the timing was excellent as well. Me and Bumpy will, will go off for five, 10 minutes, won't we? Um, and, we'll, and we will do both of those drills. Some days I might take the bowlers as they're running through, but generally I'll, I'll literally do 10 minutes work and that'll be me done. And some days, you know, it can literally be two, three minutes work, just, you know, feeling the ball and gloves, a couple of one-handers either side, a couple of dives. And other days I'll, you know, I want to take some off the face with the bat and also do my drills. So it, it does vary day to day. We're going to do one more set. At the end of the set, I want you to tell me what went well, what you could have done better maybe. But to do it, we're going to do it left-handed. The reason we do a left-hander is the last thing we want is to be so used to practicing doing drills to right-handers that it feels alien when all of a sudden you're keeping out there and there's a left-hander at the crease. So we need to do as much work for a left-hander as we do for a right-hander. Good, very good. Any thoughts? Uh, generally pretty good. There are a couple, maybe leg side, I could say a little bit lower, been a little bit more explosive. Okay, excellent. So remember when we're going leg side, Keep them hands nice and low. Reach out for it on the line where you think it'll be, but start from low and work your way upwards. Are they your favourite drills? Yeah, they are. You know, I do them mainly in practice. I'll also do them before a game as well. The first one, like you said, it's just to get me up for it. And then the second one for technique and keeping myself low. And again, prepare myself for keeping to the spinners and the medium paces. If you drop Brian Lara on, on 10 or 15 or, or Sachin Tendulkar, then it could well be a long day and every single run he scores is, is, is quite difficult to uh, cope with. But one of the tips I would say is obviously you've got to relax and it's difficult to do that when you feel as though you've let the team down. But I tell the keepers to take a look at the scoreboard. See how many overs are left in the day. It might have been on the 41st over or it might be on the 10th over. If it's a 50 over game you've got 40 more overs now to make sure you get through without making a mistake because that's the best you can possibly do. If you're thinking about that miss you're bound to miss another one or not keep as well in the game. High class wicket keeping, Brendan McCullum. Okay, this drill, Devo, all I'm going to do, I'm going to be underarming the ball from low down. It's to encourage good leg side taking of the ball. I'm just going to try and skim the batsman, hopefully just miss him on his legs. I want you to be weighing up the information from the offside, from where you are now, and starting to get your hands to move across early. And then once you know where that ball's going to be, Move across with your head and your legs afterwards. Okay, Devo, so we're going to do some left handed work again. So important that you've got the right feel for the left handman as well. Go off side and leg side. Last drill for us here, Devo. Skimmers for the rhythm, like we do before, but we'll put a batsman in just for a bit of a distraction. The batsman's going to drive at the ball, but he's going to miss them all. I think if I could give one advice to. Um, to possibly level one and two coaches who are out there. Uh, it would be, you all know the basics of what you've been taught and uh, the type of basics that what you've been taught is very good and it'll hold you in good stead. I think the advice I'm, I want to give is, is don't be frightened of actually doing some work with keepers. Uh, the wicket keeper turns up, he's out on his own a lot in the side, there's only one of them. He turns up to practice, he's got nobody to work with a lot of the time. Um, and don't be frightened of actually uh, going in there and, and, and teaching them the basic things that you know. So I think a lot of people fear working with the wicket keeper because it's an area they're not familiar with and um, of course the end result is the keeper gets no practice so, uh, and no coaching. 
So uh, the keeper wants somebody to come along and help him. Um, and, and if it's not the coach, he might look for a buddy to help him as well. But uh, if you don't feel totally confident, then make somebody else do it or like somebody, but don't neglect him. That's what I'm trying to get at. Don't neglect the keeper.